Okay, one of the things that I really like about the Goiton book is that it makes it very clear when you're talking about homeostasis in the body, the most important area of homeostasis that we're talking about is in the extracellular fluid. So here we have, I have a little drawing of a cell, and we've got a little nucleus within it, and various other organelles and whatever. And you got the cell membrane here, the phospholipid bilayer membrane. And the area outside the cell is surrounded by an interstitial fluid. And the interstitial fluid is made up of water and electrolytes and various other things. So water, electrolytes, and a protein matrix, essentially. So we have H2O. electrolytes and glucose and dissolved oxygen and dissolved carbon dioxide and proteins. Okay, these are all things that are surrounding the cell. And then around the cell you know the cell is also surrounded by other cells but the cells essentially are suspended in this bath of extracellular fluid. Now, the extracellular fluid has to have be maintained in a very precise balance, or very precise homeostasis. And when we are talking about homeostasis of the organism, we are essentially focused on the homeostasis of that extracellular fluid. Now, a cell, a cell in a, in a eukaryotic organism has a very weak and thin um, cell membrane. It doesn't have a cell wall. It also has no um, capacity to go out hunting and gathering food. Um, so it's dependent on uh, the environment around it um, to be perfectly safe and have all the elements that it needs to survive. And those elements are listed here in this table. And you can see here that um, the elements that are very critical to the survival of the cell are oxygen, certain electrolytes, sodium, potassium, um, glucose, the temperature of the fluid, and acid base. Now, there is a very fine range. These all have to be in a very well, in a very narrow range. That is, they have to be very balanced. So. The dissolved oxygen has to be somewhere between 35 or 45 millimeters of, of mercury in order for the organism to be healthy. And if it gets outside of a very broad range, then the organism will die. Um, likewise, electrolytes have to be kept within a very narrow range. Potassium and sodium. And because cells can't go out hunting for food. They always have to be bathed in a solution that has a ready supply of nutrients like glucose. And the glucose has to be within a specific concentration or illness will occur. And the cell can't warm itself or cool itself so the fluid that it's suspended in has to be a specific temperature in a very narrow range. And likewise for pH. Okay, so when we, when we are talking about homeostasis, as far from the perspective of the cell, what is critical is the homeostasis of the extracellular fluid. And that homeostasis requires a balance of all the critical, um, all the critical elements that are dissolved in the water which surrounds the cells.